Good evening, everyone. We are live. Who is excited? Who is excited? Who is excited? We are live. Day two of the Fiercely Confident series. I'm just sending a quick message to let everybody know that we are live. If you are ready, I can see the comment section really blowing up. And I am super excited for tonight. Yesterday was incredible. It was a feast, basically, that we had. And I just honestly am so grateful to God for the opportunity to steward such a movement, to create a platform where light, you know, is being shared. And I, I don't have enough words to describe my excitement not just in the flesh but my excitement in the spirit for what god is doing right for what god is doing and so just let them know in the community that we are live now so that they can join us and our guest tonight is Temila de salami and she's going to be joining us pretty shortly and so i want us to prepare our hearts again you know the drill prepare your heart Make sure you have your, your, your journaling materials. Make sure you open up your heart to what God wants to say. Make sure you are telling your friends, your family, and everybody, you know, that cares to, that cares, that you care about, right? Make sure you're telling everyone you care about that we are live and we are ready to go. Um, let me know where you're joining us from tonight. Where are you joining us from? Where are you joining this session from? do let me know. And um, I am looking forward to your responses. A quick thing I wanted to say, you know, yesterday is that sometimes we are not able to fully maximize everything that God has in store for us. Um, we're not able to fully steward to its maximum all that God has for us. And so it is so important for us to have an environment that helps us to steward the, the, the light that comes. It is so important. And I don't want you to think that because you've heard what you heard, you, you already understand and you already know. There's a dimension of understanding that has come, but there's work to be done. Because the truth of the matter is that the brain would always go to status quo if we do not impose upon it the new realities that we want to see in our lives. Your brain would always go to what has been fixed if we don't deliberately do the work that is required, right, to see a new reality in our lives. And so don't assume that just because you had goosebumps and you had those fire moments yesterday, you have everything down packed and you know exactly what to do next. And at some level, yes, that will happen to you. But I want you to also be aware that there's a reason why you've consistently worked at the level at which you've been working in before now. And it's because there's a, there's a preset. There's a preset that you must replace. And the, the process of the Conf Fiercely Confident series is designed to replace the preset. And as we have these sessions, I want your heart to be open to say, God, what are the next steps I must begin to take? What are the things I must begin to do to shift from where, where I am to where I must be? So yes, I hope we're excited about that. I can see those joining from Canada. Um, I can see... I can see uh, Favor from Potakot. I can see Faith from Canada. I can see Nanman from Canada. Um, what else? What else? Who else is here? I can see Briggs from Abuja. Uh, David, UK, Wolverhampton, Ekiti. You know, it's Ghana, Joss, Abuja, London, uh, UK. It's, it's, it's just, it's, it's a whole... It's a melting pot in this place, and it is just a, a pointer to the fact that there's no, there's no, there are no, there are no boundaries. There are no boundaries to how much truth and revelation you can receive. There are no boundaries to the possibilities, right, that are in God. And so, I just want your heart to be open this very moment to say, God, I want you to speak to me, custom made. There's nothing like it. There's not. Nothing like receiving your own personal word. There's nothing like receiving your own 
tailor-made word, that which God has for you, not just for the next person or not that friend that you have in mind, but for you. And so I want your heart to be open tonight and say, Father, speak to me, speak to me uh, uh, clearly. Let it be customized. Let it be customized for the season I'm in and for the season you are taking me to. It is, it is, not, it is not enough for me to just have a general idea of what you are saying. I want to put my finger on it. I want to be able to put my finger on what it is that you are saying. Enlarge my capacity. One of the things that is happening to us in our generation, right, is the fact that we are, we are receiving bite-sized information and we are having this short attention span because of the bite-sized information. And so our capacity to stay long, our capacity for enlarged, appetite is being is being attacked it's actually an attack it's being attacked and so you have to fight for staying power you have to you have to fight for an enlarged appetite you have to fight for what it is that you truly 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 desire you you see and so i want you to open up your heart tonight and receive and say god i want my appetite to be enlarged my appetite to receive. I don't want to just come and say, okay, let me just hear what they have to say. This is not what I want to hear what Timmy has to say. No, this is, I want to hear what God has to say through Timmy that is for me. So increase my appetite for your word, my appetite for your truth, my appetite for light, my appetite for life. Increase my appetite for all that you want to do, not just in me, but through me. Increase my appetite to receive, to receive the download, to receive the download in the name of Jesus. And I pray for everybody here. I pray that your appetite is enlarged. I pray that your spirit is enlarged. I pray that what God wants to do, he does in you. I pray that you are able to see very clearly the enormous resource that is God, right? Remember, I spoke to you yesterday and I said, during the session with Jay Boops, I said something and I said that a lot of the times the problem is not that we think we are, we are in, incapable. The problem is that we have not allocated the right amount of weight that we ought to allocate to God. We have not. And so sometimes we can't see that God is the God of all might. When you say, oh God, you are almighty. You don't see him as the God of all might, all capacity. The one that has every resource, everything that you need is in him. And so we need to be able to see him as that. And so we ask God that you are the God of all might. We open up our hearts to receive the fullness of the resource that you are. That you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing. We give you praise. All right. So who is ready? Who is ready for me? Um, I want to know if you're ready for, for me and you're ready for our guest tonight, Temi um, you, you have to show me. Have you? If you're ready for me, let me know. If you're ready for me, let me know. If you are ready for me, let me know. I want to see it. I'm ready. If you're ready for Temila, they let us know. If not, I won't bring her out. Just tell her, you know what? Go and sleep. I know you've had a long day. You know, the people are not ready. They don't, they are not feeling it like that. They are just feeling peckish. They are not hungry. I want hunger. It's hunger that it's hunger that makes you feel. It's not those who are peckish and just want a little bit of this and that. You see, okay, I can see the readiness. I love it. I love it for you. Yes, I can see the readiness. I love it. I'm excited. I'm super, super pumped. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so we're just going to bring her up now. Yay! Can you see her? Can you see who we have in the building? Can you see who we have in the building? It is the one, the only Temila Day. And, you know, I posted her bio on, on Instagram. And for those of you who do not know, you know, she's an environmentalist. She's doing amazing things, an entrepreneur. And she's a child of God. Let me tell you something. One of the, the very things or the main things that attracts me to people in this life yeah, 
is Jesus. Once I see the sign of the cross in the middle of their lives, I'm like, this one, she's my brother, she's my, he's my brother, she's my sister. And I came across your page sometime last year. When I came across your page, it was, uh, I think it was a testimony of how you graduated. Um, you started, re you, you studied dentistry or something, but you ended up in this field and all of that. And I saw that video, I was like, wow, so inspirational, amazing. And that was how it passed. And then sometime, I think this year, your name just kept ringing around. I would always see it. I would always just, I'm like, okay, who is this, you know, who is this girl? Who is this, who is this young lady? Global Timmy. And so eventually I, I just, I, I came across your page. One of those days I just looked through and I was like, wow, I love the passion for Christ and the passion for the work that God has called her to do. I'm following. And so I followed. From there, I was able to see how, how just little bits here and there, you know, I, I didn't know too much about you, but I could put, you know, one and two together. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. What a life, what an inspiration. And then by this time, I mean, last year, the Holy Spirit started to talk to me about the Fiercely Confident series and the names of those who were going to, you know, be a part of it. You know, he had shared with me over time, you know, the names kept coming and we were done. We were actually done. All of a sudden, I did not have a rest. I just, your name kept, I had a conversation with my peer and I was like, I don't know what it is. This global thing, she just keeps, her name just keeps ringing in my spirit and I don't know her, you know, and all of that. She has to be a part of this series. And I was like, okay, but we've already spoken to all the guests. Anyway, the way God did it, uh, it's still so, I, I will probably share the story at not that time. But I reached out and as soon as I reached out, bam, 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 everything worked out and she's here. And this is, I'm sharing this story to tell you that. God was so intentional about Temilade being here tonight, and it was because of you. I'm not trying to psych you. When, when I'm not trying to you know, motivate you, I'm trying to tell you truth, that it was in God's intention, it was part of his plan that she was going to be a part of the series. And she's someone I don't know. A lot of the people I even know, a, a lot of the other people I know, I have some form of relationship with, but her, I didn't. And God still put her on this, on this, on this call for, for us to le lean into him and see what it is that he wants us to see. And so do not take it for granted. And if there's something that I have seen from Temilade's life, from the online, <laughs> is that she sold out to God and sold out to this mission. I've seen somebody that is so, so intentional a young woman that is so intentional about what God is doing with her. And that is where we are going to kickstart, Tammy. You are welcome. We welcome you. We welcome you to this community. We welcome you to the Fiercely Confident series. And I'm just going to dive straight in. I'm not even going to do plenty, you know. We're going to dive straight in. I said, I want to know the mindset of a person to call themselves global Tammy. <laughs> what was <laughs> what what did you see what was doing you that's my favorite question you know to ask <laughs> what was doing you that made you say you know what this is who i am and this is the name i'm giving myself mm. and everything is going to align to this reality so yeah mm. just take it from there well thank you so much and i can you all hear me hi yes everyone. we can great and um I just think I need to say this. I'm not supposed to be, like, by all logical standard, I'm not supposed to be on this call. I don't give anybody wow. my, my Sunday evenings. Like, that's the only time mm. I get to rest. But I've never chatted that's with good. her. And I just felt, I don't do anything just because I feel like, if I want to be speaking every day at events, I will be speaking because I get a lot of invites. But Come on now. This, this year, I've been very specific about, you know, going to places where God has sent me to go, right? Because mm. you can do what you want to do and still not get reward or people will not get transformed. So I just wanted to say, please, if you're on this call and you know somebody that needs to be on this call, just send the link out and thank you so much for having me. So back to your question. Um, I think I need to say this. So when I changed my name to the God me, I probably have over 150 people who are following me who currently change their name to the global something and oh. it's quite 
I think it's two sides for me. First of all, it's really beautiful to see that at least the influence is not a bad influence. But yeah. secondly, in my mind, I'm like, there's so many things behind the name that I think this is the first time I'll ever be sharing it publicly. So if you've known me before, I used to be a Timmy the Poet. That was my Instagram handle. And wow. for so long, you know, that was like, okay, yeah, everybody knew me as a poet. And then I moved, I'm just like, okay, the Lord said, like, this is not your identity. I don't want you to wrap your identity around anything, you know. So I just use my name because I'm a woman of, like, I do a lot of things, actually. So I just put Timiladi Salami. But the Timiladi Salami was for two reasons. First of all, I my work was already going international. And there's something about meeting people at spaces and you tell them my name is this or you speak in this space. And the next thing they're doing is trying to check you out. On Instagram, mm. so that was the sole reason why I changed to my general name. And then for the global Timmy, you know, it was actually and this is not cliche. It was a revelation first to me. I literally just woke up that day and I said, you know what, I'm going to change my name today because this is who God has called me to be, and wow. I will work in it. So I changed it, wow. but that's not even that's not even the bone of contention. Just a few days okay. after then, this very closely knitted event. I won't call it an event. It's always like more like an encounter in my church that my pastor organizes and we call it like sons, partners and protégés. So where he brings people who really follow him, like you know his disciples and then he just impart and everything. And my pastor at that time wasn't on Instagram or anything. He didn't know that I changed my name. And then he said, I'm, the Lord said, I'm making you global. Immediately he said it. Me and my friends literally looked at each other because I just changed my name 48 hours ago. So wow. me the global tell me online, it's not because it sounds cool or nice, you know. So there is a whole lot, you know, I, I can just share that briefly. I, I just did that to show you that everything that you see out there is super intentional. And mm. the thing is, the moment that thing happened, a lot of things started happening after that. Every wow. thing I was doing became bigger on the global scale. So it was just, it might seem like a name, but it was a lot, like, you know, behind wow. the scenes for me just, you know, changing my name and anything. And one thing I'll always say is that, you know, I would always obey God. And that's the like very crux of the matter. There was no logical reason. Of course, yeah, people knew I was traveling, but it was not because I was traveling. That's why I changed my name to the yeah. global Very instructive. That was why I changed it. Yeah. So that, that's wow. <laughs> wow. You guys, you know, we can actually sit here. We can sit here for a while. And the reason I'm saying this is because something she said is so profound. And it is so profound for us to be able to track the communication of God. Mm. When And it wasn't a big bang. She didn't have, like, it didn't start out with, oh, okay, uh, maybe, it's not that she hasn't been praying or she hasn't been fasting. The, the suggestions of God to you uh, are not just suggestions. The impressions mm. that come upon your heart, they are not just impressions. When God speaks to you and says, you know, I'm, I'm making you global. You don't sit down and just be like, mm -hmm. me, global, yeah. Who am I? What am I? What's my father's house? Where am I going? The, 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 the voice of God should be the primary trigger in your life. Mm. She said it was a revelation. She had a revelation. And I pray, I just feel very strongly for us to, you know, just in this moment, just ask God, Reveal to me my true identity, that which is unique to me. Reveal it to me. This is not a season to do copy and paste. Yes, be inspired. Yes, be encouraged by other people's stories. But this is a season where you move in accordance to the revelation that God has shown you. This is what she did. And it was when she took that step, there were now confirmations. You know our problem sometimes. Some of us, we are waiting. Okay, God, see, I'm doing my appointments. I must travel. Show me my next appointment. You know, let there be an email that says, we're calling you to come to China. You know, you are going to change destinies in China. 
God has told you this is who you are. You are my beloved son in who I'm well pleased. Beloved, let it be your anchor that I am now the beloved of God. I am now global to me. I am now favorable favor. You know, I am now supernatural, Stephanie. Everything I do is supernatural. Let that be your reality. Let me tell you guys, let me use this opportunity to share my own story. Everybody calls me Lady Kems now, so it's even difficult to hear my name, Kemi. Like if people call me Kemi, it's so difficult to respond because I'm so used to hearing Lady Kems. Lady Kems came as a result of, I remember then, when, when I was still, you know, half in God, half in the world, I would be hearing the voice of God telling me, you know, this thing you are doing is not ladylike. It's not like who you are. And I'll be, I'll be suppressing it, suppressing it, suppressing it for a while. So when I started to get, you know, closer to God, I just saw that picture and I saw, okay, this, this is a lady. God has called me to be his lady and express that life. And so this was before I got married, by the way, so that you guys don't think that ah, because of marriage and then me and my husband pastor a church, I'm now the first lady. I called myself Lady Kems before I met my husband. Let all of us here now. And so I remember I was like, oh, it was first Lady Elizabeth. So I switched it to Lady Elizabeth on, in, uh, on Instagram because my first name is Elizabeth. I was like, ah, you can't even be more, you can't even be more lady than Elizabeth. So it just flows. And so I just, after a while, I thought, oh, that's too long. You know, I still want to be very down to earth. I want to be a lady that people can relate with. The one that can, you know, talk anyhow she likes sometimes. And, you know, you still relate. And so that was how I was like, oh, Lady Kent. And that was how I started. I put Lady Kent on my on my Instagram, before I met my husband, before we started church, before I even knew that church was in the picture of our lives. And this is just to tell you that the vision of yourself that you see is that which can propel you into that reality. You can't come to a reality beyond what you can see, beyond what has been revealed to you. It's not possible. It's not possible. And that's why you must say to God, reveal who I am to me, reveal my true identity to me, reveal my true authentic identity to me. And someone asked yesterday, what does he mean? <laughs> That's my husband. <laughs> he just commented, love you. What does it mean to, to be authentic, you know, to live authentic? And I said, anything that is less than God's design, based on the revelation he has given you today because your identity in him continues to evolve so anything less than your current the current revelation that god has given you is less than if you live less than that that is not authentic to be authentic is to live according to the revealed identity that god has shown you based on your current situation so i want you guys to hear what Tini is saying that she did not sign up to be global Tini because it was popular because she's traveling. It was because God revealed it to her. And it was from that place that there was revelation. It was a, a confirmation, sorry. It was from that place that opportunities began to open up, right? And so let's talk about that. Let's then talk about that, Timmy, very quickly. So I remember, like I said, I, I remember the video you, you, you posted a while ago. And you didn't start out as, as this climate change person that was passionate about the environment. You know, what, how did you come to that place? Like, how did you become passionate about that climate education? Um, and and what, what, what did you see? Because again, there must have been something you saw. Or how did you transition from this dentist or, re, or studying dentistry to becoming this global thing that we all see? Ah, thank you. <laughs> I told the story yesterday and I think I'll just say it really quick. So it was, I would first say it was circumstantial, you know, with human, you know, definition, but it was God literally redirecting my life. So I entered Unilag. If there's any Unilag people here, please drop some emojis. <laughs> I didn't know you last I, 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 I rep you guys. <laughs> I was studying dentistry and dental surgery. And the normal thing is when you get to 100 level, you move to like second year at the College of Medicine. That's where you start like your medical life properly. And um, I passed. I did everything I could do. I, I did well. As you can tell online, I'm intelligent. So that was not my problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, Nigeria happened. Unilag happened. Um, 
there were so many um, rules that they didn't, you know, follow with the medical council, Nigeria Medical Council, and that was all the story they, they gave us. So they had to cut about hundred of us off, off the list. And I know get Lego. I didn't have anybody to run to because people who had people to run to were able to cross over. So I, that was how you know I lost my dentistry admission in hundred level, and they told us to go back home. So some things happened, they called us back and they offered us some courses. That was the first time in my life I heard anything about marine biology because I would never imagine anybody in my life in Nigeria going to go and study marine. What are you going to use it for? <laughs> you know, but I didn't know that what was unfamiliar to me was what God wanted, you know, for me. So I joined mm. the department and there's something about me. I, I so much believe that my purpose or anything is not tied to who I am. So if I stop doing climate change today and I become an engineer, I am still Timmy Ladis Salami. Nothing I is love that. To do. So the constant key here for me is me being with God. So I moved to marine biology and God told me it was, I'm saying it now, it looks easy. It was probably the hardest time of my life. You know, if you're studying medicine and they put you in another department, it's not funny. So God told me that if you're going to be in this department, whatever is worth doing. Is worth doing well, you know. So that was how the whole journey started. And then we went, we went for a field trip. And then we went to when we wanted to collect the water samples because we test for water. And mm -hmm. I saw like a dirty community. I'm like, wait, like, is this a normal thing for like some, somewhere to be dirty? You know, I was living inside Jimmy Lab. So they always clean the environment and everything. So I felt so uncomfortable about it. So I went back to my lecturer to say, is there a way we can go back to this community? Let's just organize ourselves and just start to clean up. That was what I said. I put it out that, oh, yeah, guys, this place is dirty. Let's go do clean up. And about 100 people showed up that day. And that was the moment I knew that I wanted to do, you know, everything that has to do with environment and all of that. And then it was not just also doing because sometimes it's not even passion that leads you there. It's you seeing a problem and you being uncomfortable about it, right? So I, when, when that happened, God just told me, this is where I want it to be. And this is where you are going to stay. And at that point, it's not a place where you'll be getting money or anything. And I knew that there's also God giving you an assignment and then you equipping yourself for that assignment. So I started reading things. It's, it even got worse because... There were not so many things, even as are now, there were not so many things you can access on climate change data and information in Nigeria. And I, mm. that was how I started looking out for, you know, learning opportunities, not even opportunities to travel, learning opportunities to know, because I know that when I know, I'm indispensable, right? So I started wow. reading things. I read the hard things. You know, they call us Indomie generation, but I don't like to bear that name because I will read things, you know, bigger than where I am. I'm... I read long articles, even though I did not understand most of those most of those things. I put myself and stretched myself. So that was how I got into this space. And then I started an NGO when I was in school. But sorry, I, 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 don't, I don't feel comfortable glossing over what you just said. I'm sorry. I would have loved for you to just finish. We will get back to where you stopped. Yeah. But I want us to hear what she just said. She said that, hey <laughs> God, that she is, she puts herself through the rigors of that which she knows that God has called her to do. She puts herself through the rigors of learning. Yes, because she becomes indispensable. She knows that when she learns, just like the, um, Daniel, who learned by the books, these, these are the principles you have to take into heart. Yes, mm. God has called you. And like one of my, my mentors, she says, if you do not take that, that, that knowledge, that calling to Harvard, if you don't take it to school, it will remain crude. The challenge we have in Nigeria is that we are not refining that which grows naturally, that which is our calling, that which we've been called to do. If you mm. don't take it to school, if you don't study, if you don't pay attention to what God is paying attention on, you will, you will miss out on the possibilities that are there. And so I love mm. that. I, I didn't want us to miss that at all. Please yeah. make sure that if God calls you and you know he has called you, what even validates your belief in that call is the step you take as a result. Yeah. If God says, 
blessed are you amongst women you are going to carry a seed called the messiah you then take a step and go and study under study elizabeth right who experienced a supernatural what conception that is what you do. You go to the order of those who have gone ahead of you to, to gain insight, revelation, greater wisdom on how you can journey far too. So please, this generation, and I love how she rejected an identity that is not hers. She said, I am not a part of the Indomie generation. I put myself through the process that is required to get the results that must be gotten. I love it. Please continue. Yeah, so that was how I started. And I think I also need to mention this, you know, when God says go, it doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that that's where you want to start running, mm. right? So it's one thing to also get the, like the instruction from God. It's another yeah. thing to pray with God continually to keep getting instruction from him. So, so what many people do is God has called me to this place. Okay, I pack my bag, I go. But there are other details. Yeah, the first thing is obeying God. Okay, this is yeah. what God wants. Me. But okay, how does God want me to do it? Which part of this field no. does God want me to go to? Oh, how does he want me to handle it? Oh, in what best possible way does God want me to handle it? So you were this? asking God these questions. Yeah, so I was I was very alert in my spirit to know that, oh yeah, if God, is, God has called me, but if there's a way God wants me to do his thing, right? Yeah. So, so I, I just sat down and I said, okay, there are so many parts of climate change, tech, a lot, a lot. It's just the way you have tech. There's data analysis. There's this one. Okay. Yeah. God wanted me to like do some specific things. So I, I majored on that, which was a like climate education. And at that time, it didn't really make sense because the problems in Nigeria, you are not, people are not even thinking about climate change. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. Right? Yeah. people want to people want to feed people want to feed their families and just have a good life so these are not like prioritized problems per se or prioritized issues so i was just doing my thing and just focusing and consistently being at my assignment even though it didn't make sense but what i didn't know is that there will be a time when mm -hmm. everybody will be looking for a climate education professional in nigeria and africa and mm -hmm. god had already prepared me right before mm -hmm. now make sure that i'm already prepared for the demand that is ahead so you wow. don't start training at war you will never wow. see a student that is going to war and that's when they are learning how to cook you know mm. the <laughs> you know the item that they use to use at yeah. war yeah. when they cook gone so you prepare yourself ahead and the thing is mm. when it's happening and it doesn't look like it one thing i love about god all the things he wants you to do. He doesn't want you to do it so that you can get something from him. It's to train you in the process. So in the yeah. end, me being a global person is not, like that's not God's, um, um, how would I put it, final destination for my life. Yeah. There were so many other things that God wanted yeah. me to train through how to like have great staying power because it takes staying power for you to keep at something that is not popular. I knew how many people that moved to yeah. different places. I could have accessed many opportunities and I, I would have probably blown. <laughs> but I knew that process was more important than blowing and, you know, every other thing. So that was just how I started. And I'll just put it here. When you, if there is darkness in this room and you put on the light, you don't need to be explaining yourself that I'm the best. You don't need to be telling people. When you are light in that place, you attract so I don't lobby for things. I don't try to wow. do computer. I, I just wow. put myself on God has put me. And God wow. is, is doing and sending men onto me. I will men will draw to me. Like if you shine your light, men will come to the brightness of your light. All you have to do is to shine, and then men will come to you. But if you are light, you are going around looking for who to attract. You are not really, really light. Maybe you should actually check it, right? So for me, it was more of, you know, God wants you here, but beyond God wanting you here, there's so many processes he wants to take you through and don't be so focused on where you are going, destination. Oh, I get a lot of DMs and people will be like, hi, Timmy, oh, how do you do this? I want to be traveling like you. And I don't want to dampen their excitement to say, your mm. aim should be traveling. You will get tired. I get, I'm getting tired. Yeah. Your aim should not be to travel, mm. right? Your aim is to do what God has sent you. And traveling is 
just a little bit of what Jesus wants to do when you obey. Like, it's the most basic thing. Your father owns the world. So traveling na, na beans to Jesus, you just do the things that Come you need on. to do. Focus on God, yeah. Hi, wow. Can we pass offering baskets? Can we pass offering baskets round? Because it's a sermon, like, really. And I don't want to, you know, joke around what you've just said because these are very critical principles that you have shared. And I pray that our hearts are fertile ground for the words that have dropped just in this moment. Because if you hear her clearly, she has spoken about the fact that this journey to where she is right now, in the eyes of the world, it just seems circumstantial. And I feel very strongly for some of us here that what seems like one plus one is not really two. It just feels like you just ended up, just ended up in this thing. I just somehow... You know, it's just, just somehow I just found myself. But knowing that God is the author and the finisher, he's the one who starts and ends your life. He's the one that everything, everything about your life, he's the one mapping it out, right? And so seeing how she's able to see the hand of God, what this tells me is that you will not always see the hand of God at the time it's happening. And I really want this to sit in. God's hand, it's, it's nice to look at the hand of God in retrospect. But when you are in the heat of the moment, she said, she said, marine what? Like, what's marining? Like, what, what are we doing here? Right? It did not feel like the hand of God was on that matter. But as she's unpacking her life, she's able to see how he has strategically placed her where she needed to be. And she also said something profound, that sometimes it's not your passion that will birth, you know, this new assignment as it were. A lot of the times it is that God just places a burden on your heart or he just says, okay, this is a need that should be met. My doctor, Temi, are you ready to meet this need? And let me tell you something. I will, we're having this conversation today earlier and I was saying that we don't have to be familiar with the reality that God is trying to bring us into. It is too much, it's too much of pride in ourselves to think that everything God is going to say is going to be confirmation for it will not always be confirmation. Sometimes God is bringing new realities to you that you should open up to. And it is humility that says, God, even though this does not seem like where we were going before, because it is your voice and it is because you are sending me, let me be moving in the direction of your word. In time, it's, it can make sense to me. In time. And so over time, being able to see the hand of God, even when it is not yet first familiar, when it is not yet first commonplace to what you've already been thinking and brooding over, and when she spoke about identity not being tied to the outcome, and it's similar to what Jebum said yesterday, and it's the same principle I hold dear to my life. One of the reasons why I can start any business today, stop it tomorrow, do anything my father will have. I'm holding fiercely confident series. It was not in the plan for me before. I've done single and fierce for single people. It's it's just as it will come. If I, people have been disturbing, you've not had any session with us. I say, when I, have, when, when I have the push, I will do it again. And my identity is not tied to the outcome of any assignment. And that is why a lot of you, you need to be free. You are first beloved. You are first his daughter. You are first his son. He loves you like that. Now, when he calls you to do anything, he can tell you to pick up. You know, when Jesus was asking, when Jesus was asking, who do you see? Who do people, who do people say I am? Right? They were asking this question. I said, some say you are this, some say you are that. Some, you know, some say you are this, some say you are that. People are going to have different things. And do you know why they all had different things? Because they also different dimensions of Jesus. They didn't all have the same thing. Because he could express himself as Elijah today, the, in the spirit of Elijah, he can express like ah Moses, he can express like ah. He can be anything. You could not tie him to the at best they called him rabbi. You but his identity, what he now ended up saying is like 
when Peter recalled, you know, recalled it, he said, you are the son. You are first son. Your sonship is the true identity. That's what it is. And that's what she has cracked. That is why she, did you hear her? With all the trips, with all the opportunities that are tied around what she's currently doing, she said that if God says, leave climate change and I have another assignment for you to do in the meantime, she's ready because her identity is in God as his daughter. First. First. This is so, this is, and I pray, I hope you are liberated. I hope you are liberated. And of course, we already spoke about her saying how she put her, 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 her pen to paper, started doing the research. And God must not be calling you to do something that has, that has bearing for today. Don't look at the environment of today to determine whether what God has called you to do is going to be valid or not. Please. Mm -hmm. We are on Zoom and all these platforms. They did, not st they did not start today. They've been building for a while. It was the environment called COVID that made that validated what they had been building. And so see her now. People are looking for climate change professionals. They are looking for her. They're looking for her, her expertise because she had been doing the back end work. Even when it did not look like it. What is God telling you to do? What are the things he's calling you into? And you are looking for reference points. And Timmy, let's talk about that. Mm. How did you, I know you spoke about staying power and you dropped some gems, but I want you to just press into it a little bit. What gave you the confidence to really stay on a matter that did not have much reference point? Even till today, some people are just even coming into the reality of this whole climate change thing. It's not even that it has become, it, it's what, yes, world, you know, based on world standards, yes, it's, it's something people know. But in this part of the world, it's still, it's still like in its baby form. What mm -hmm. gave you the impetus to stay on, uh, 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 on a career path, right, that didn't have any reference point? Mm. I think for me, it's all, it just boils down to obeying God by time yeah. and understanding that. So let me, let me just say this so that I can give like a background. If I'm not traveling around the world and people still don't know me about climate change, I'll be very content. And that's the truth. So then it was, it was not, I, I did not even dream about me. Me tra travel as it the, the way and and the way. <laughs> mm. As as I then the question was ah. already. I was really if you knew me before now, I'm a very confident person. But deep down, I'm like, oh, just travel. Where is the money? Where is it? You know, <laughs> all these things and all these things were not the reason why I was doing what I was doing. My own was mm. just oh, do this. Oh, I find sometimes you know even here go and do this. Sometimes just go places, all those things there as problems. So when we finished this project, oh, I saw that number one, we're trying to do a program in our in our organization, and then we could not access materials that were contextualized to Nigeria. Yeah. So when I went to the bookstore to be looking to look out for books and everything, I realized that there was nothing, there was nothing um, you know, Nigerian in the bookstore that dealt with you know climate education. I think the only person that's so rest in peace that wrote about the environment was Pastor Nom Theo Dukoya, right? So oh, that wow. was a pressing, and it was because when I wrote my own, I started seeing her own book, and then I'm like, okay, actually, I'm not alone, right? Mm -hmm. So that was what burst that. So seeing problems and not running away from them was the constant thing that just, you know, kept me going, knowing that in the end, you know, lives are being changed. People are knowledgeable about the things that I'm teaching them. And it's even worse because this is education. You don't get return on investment immediately. So you cannot say, oh, I went to teach these children. Now they are, you know, you can't say this is the ROI immediately. The ROI yeah. is not something you can measure. But I knew that this is where God wanted me, wanted me to be. And I needed to be there at that time. Right, so it's very important that whenever God gives us idea, even if you close it down, finish well. God is mm. not a Yamayama finisher. He did everything down to when he went to the course. He he mm. did everything so perfectly. He finished his race. He didn't just go to the course. He resurrected the way he said he will resurrect. 
He gave us the Holy Spirit the way he promised. So if you will finish anything in your life, if you are in his own image, make sure everything is everything you are doing is also in reference to how Jesus wow. has also lived, right? So everything we need in life wow. is literally in the Bible. So for me, it was just, I'm a very focused person and I feel like all the things that happened to me while I was, you know, a teenager and the way God has built me, how life literally started happening to me like when I was young, it gave me resilience, it gave me staying power, it gave me focus, wow. you know. Wow. So I, if you like, let them release iPhone 1 million. If I don't see a need to buy it and I have the money, I will not buy it, you wow. know. So I've, God has dealt with me you know, about being proud and not being content in the past. So when that assignment came, it was like, yes, you know, all the things God had been preparing me for, it was building my character for the assignment. So it really, really helped me. And another thing I'll also say, God gives us ideas. He's also the one that says it's time to stop. It's time to, you know, revolutionize your idea. It's time to yeah. evolve. Even with my foundation, if you know us, with my organization, right? if you know us very well, We've not been actively working in the past few months. And I've been getting questions like, you know, oh, what are, what are you doing? Is there anything that, you know, that is wrong? But like people's questions are not even from a genuine place of being caring, like, oh, what's up? But it's like, oh, you've been doing this thing. Why, why are you not doing it? And I know that God wants this organization to take a different route in the next few months, which we are launching soon. So I'm not doing anything to impress anybody. Wow. Whatever you're doing to wow. impress it, you made that man your God. So every single thing you're doing, you always make reference to the fact that, oh, there's somebody somewhere that I want to impress. So my life is totally sold out to God. So if you tell me go, I will go. You say pass um, Abolaji Street to get to your destination, I will go there. So you need that focus. A lot of people switch careers when God did not tell them to switch careers. Just because, right. you know, this is what is raining. Just because. Oh, I need extra cash. Of course, that's you can do all those things, um, legitimate businesses, but understand that there is a, a better reward that comes from staying where God has put you. And I think that's super, super, super important. Wow. There's a better reward in staying where God has placed you. I hope someone heard that because I did. Because I did. And, you know, it's something we people often say, and they say jokingly about focus, focus, focus. But you are not just saying it. That is your life. And it is clear. It is actually clear that you are focused. And one of the things she said that I want us to take very important is the fact that obedience to God is her number one priority. She sold out. And this is a common thread with every speaker that you are going to hear throughout. You heard it with Jay Booms yesterday. You heard it today. I know you will hear it throughout. <laughs> if you want to truly say you are fiercely confident, it, you must be hinged on someone that is bigger than you. Your confidence has to be hinged on that which is bigger than you. And she said she sold out. Are you sold out to God? Can God say my daughter, I want you to do this. And I want you to stay here. I want you to listen to me. Because the instructions of God have very little to do with boosting God's ego. They have very little to do with adding an extra chip on the shoulder of God. That you obey God does not make God more God. Ah, God is now God because you obeyed. Your obedience to God is for your own good. That is how loving and merciful the father is he has pre, pre planned your life and he is now giving you expo by giving you the holy spirit to be directing you they go here go here step here step there and you now say i don't want to obey you're not doing god though you know sometimes we rebel they were rebelling against god maybe god did not come through and everything god i'm not going to wash you i'm not going to pray uh-huh they are angels that has the assignment back to back. They are there. The sun is coming out every day. You see it, it's worshiping. The moon will show up when it's supposed to show up. The stars are there doing their thing. Dog will back when it's supposed to back. If you say you, you are the one with strong yet, you will not obey. God is, does not have 
um, you know, small ego. He's not looking for, he's not looking for us in that sense, right? It's not that he needs us. But every time we worship, every time we obey, every time we move in the direction that he's leading us, we are able to experience a dimension of God that we otherwise would not. It is actually what is changing us. It is actually what is transforming Right? Sorry, I think my network is, is a bit shaky. Um, but can you still hear me? Yeah, I don't tell all right, fantastic. So it is, it is the obedience to God transforms our own lives, makes us to look like Jesus, makes us to be conformed to the image of his son. It builds us. It gives us dimensions of God we would not experience otherwise. The greatest reward for the obedience is not that there's something on the other side. No, we like that there's something on the other side. Sometimes what is really the obedience, the fact that you obeyed and followed God, you are really on the right side. The reward is that you can hear your father, you can move with him, and he's with you. Nothing validates greater than that. And so she said, first of all, it's an obedience matter. Secondly, impact. Impact. She's seeing the lies of, she's, she's educating, she's doing all the things that she's doing because of impact, not because of trips, not because of free trips. And for as many of us that are desiring this influencer life and all of those things, let your motive be Jesus. And I know it's easy to say, but I tell you of the truth. If you are able to focus on him, if you are able to focus on him as your greatest reward, you will realize that all of these things, my father owns them anyway. You are just giving me a part of what belongs to him. You're just giving me a share of what belongs to my father that he wants to give to me. And so it is so important that one of the things that gives staying power and stay on places, it's not, nobody, it's not popular. There are things you do, no, maybe people are not seeing it. I understand, even as an educator, a lot of the times you don't see the impact immediately. It's over a period of time, but you know that you are delivering what God has told you to deliver, right? And finally, let's not forget, it's important, stay focused. Ask God for staying power. Ask him for staying power. It is, it is so important that you, you can... You can stay. Yes, God, like we said, God can tell you, okay, do this instead of re revolutionize what you are doing. But at the end of the day, it is still God who is leading you, right? And you want to obey him. Wow, Timmy, thank you. Thank you because you are setting a lot of us free. And this thing that you're saying is not just, is not just, um, they're not just mere words. They're not just mere words. You're living that life. And I know that we don't have that much time, but I want you to just speak into lights and curtains and how you said, you know what? Um, I also have this business idea that um, I want to, you know, I want to do. What, 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 what caused you to say, I want to build this business? What was the propelling force, right? What was the propelling force? that thank you so much um once again i didn't hear a big bang my daughter my daughter is going <laughs> to <stop. laughs> so if you if you know me very well i i wear like all this you know faith inscribed t-shirts and things like that when i was like three like three to three years ago or so and then I was wearing it, people, people liked it. And then one day, I think we had a conference or so, and then my team lead was just like, oh, she's not in the show anymore. My team lead was just like, okay, um, I think you should just, you know, go ahead and start selling this thing. I think it's nice. <laughs> and that was how the whole thing started. So it was, it was not a loud voice of God saying, go and start a business. <laughs> It was literally me just like, okay, now there, are, you know, we have, um, you know, there's now a demand and let me just be the person supplying. And that was how it started. But one thing about me, if I start anything, I will do it very well. I will do it well. 
So if I start selling not even t-shirts today, maybe bottle water, I will sell that bottle water water excellently. Right. So I I was just growing and taking it one step at a time. And I knew that it was time to like expand my business. And when it was also time to expand my business, I knew that God loves order. God does not thrive in chaos, like my father in the faith to say. God does not thrive in chaos. He loves order. So I started keeping my books knowing how much I was making per month, what profit margin would give me the money that I need to scale my business in the next one year. What do I need to do? Do I need to add other project products to what I was selling to be able to like, you know, get a store and things like that. Are there other skills of mine I can monetize to be able to grow my business? So I did my permutation and combination <laughs> and did a proper Google doc to see how much I could, you know, you know, save or how many, let's say webinars I have to do to get money to do my store. And that was how I got the money and immediately I paid for it. So everything that I do, I understand that there's always the hand of God who bring, that brings the increase. But I also know that as a child of God, my Jesus loves order. Hmm? Even in the Bible, when you want to teach, there's, there's, when, it, when in the Bible, when, when, you know, Jesus is teaching his disciple and everything, it, yeah, there are things I say, there are ways I say, there's orderliness in the way he does his things. Everything, there's order. Bring the jar, you know, before the oil. There's always order. Something precedes the, you know, whatever I want to do. So I just made sure that everything was okay and everything was fine. And that was how the business started, literally. And one of the things I said is, whatever I cannot put on, I will never sell to my client. Whatever I will not buy from somebody, I will never sell to anybody. So I I decided that whatever I was going to put out has to ask my mark. Like it has to bear the mark of Timmy. Who is Timmy? Timmy is an excellent person. She's a colorful person. So everything about my brand is reflecting in my business. Everything about me is reflecting in my business. So people started buying because first of all, yeah, Timmy posted about it. But I knew that I was not going to sustain the business. I needed other people that didn't know me to buy from the brand. So I made sure that whatever I was putting out was, was standard, at least on a global level. And I will tell you something. Your mind is super powerful because I will never understand why somebody will buy two shirts from me and pay 23000 naira to ship it to the UK. It makes no logical sense. I, am I the best T-shirt seller? I am, I am not, to be very honest. But the truth is, there is something that makes that draws people onto you. First of all, the God factor, knowing that you are doing everything you are doing, but God is your PR. You do all the ads, but you know it is God that makes these things work, right? So it's very important that you represent Jesus. When people see you, they know that, okay, this person, our Christianity is not the mediocrity Christianity. Everything, if you're working in an office or you're doing a business, you want to start a business, don't just do the thing the way you want to do it. Don't just deliver it the way you want to deliver it. Make sure that it has a mark that says, ah, ah, this person is excellent. Can we know you? And I'll also say this, whenever you're in a space that even you have like unbelievers and, and people like that, people don't want to know your religion first. They want to know you and who you are before they even care about if you are going to church or not. So what gets you into those rooms? It's not because you know, like, like it's the excellence that they see first and they're like, okay, now I want to know you more. Oh, I want to follow this lady. And when they follow me, they go and see Jesus, you know? So it's very important that even when God gives business ideas, you move quickly. And one of the things that I did was I made sure that immediately my, my team lead said that thing. I didn't take it as, yeah, it was just my, yeah, my team lead chatting with me. It was a confirmation for something I'd already had. And immediately I got into action. I didn't have the machines to start. In fact, I, I just got the pressing machine. But when the Lord said that thing, I just made sure that I worked with the printer. I was doing all the designs myself. I was doing the delivery and packaging, but he was just handling the printing. So it was me just doing what I needed to do at that point. And I watched how the business has grown over time, you know, so... I think I need to add this. You know, one, one thing also is knowing when God wants you to grow and knowing when God wants you to move. Sometimes he wants you to take your time and sometimes he wants you to move immediately, right? So mm. you need to make sure that you are very 
you are very close to God. If you are far away, if your mommy calls you, you will not hear anything. You will only hear a faint voice or never even hear. But if you are inside the room and your mommy even whisper, Lady Kem, Stephanie, you will hear. So you cannot want the progress that comes with Christ without wanting Christ himself. So the closer you get, the easier is, you know, the easier it is for you to hear his voice and then do all the things that you want to do. So if God has given you a business, please go ahead to do it. And I will just say this last thing. As believers, your business is not just a business. I used to tell my friend that sews clothes that I want to, I want people to wear your clothes and they, they have cancer, they, they don't have cancer again. I want people to wear what you have and their sickness is, is fleeing out of their body. And I will tell you, like, I, will, I can say this publicly, I've sold t shirts to people and maybe when I'm packing it, the Lord says, write something. I'm not that chance to be doing written notes to hundreds of customers that I serve. But I will write it. And there were so many times that they will get back to me and say, oh my goodness, I can't believe that this happened. You know, a customer will send me, oh, that's wow. okay for me. I never knew that um, a child wasn't feeling too well. But I really felt a nudge to like, just add something to our order. And I added it. And then she reached back, she reached out back to me and she was like, oh, as I speak to you, I'm currently at the hospital. And like, oh my Jesus, like, now it has gone beyond me just selling tickets. You know, people can feel that there is, there is God in this business. So whatever we are doing, we are not just doing it. Let people know your Jesus. Let them know. Publicly say it that this is where you stand. Right? So, hmm. yeah, that's it about my business. And, um, yeah. Wow. You guys, I don't know what's happening to you, but me, I know what's happening to me because this is honestly, do you, can you guys see why, like before we even go further, can you see why we needed to have global teaming on the PSD competencies? I want to see your answer. Can you see why? We have not finished though, but can you just see why first? Just acknowledge that, yeah, yeah, she needed to be on this call. For you and I, she needed to be on this call because this is also, you know, just such a, a testament to how intentional God is with our lives. Guys, tell me God bless you because you've just honestly unpacked something that I think is very important that Christians, the Christian space, we need to talk about, which is if God always has to speak to you, via big bang it may actually be because it cannot get your attention another way it's 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 <laughs> because the proof of proximity a lot of the times is when you know you're having tete-a-tete -tete intimate conversations it just comes you just you're having a conversation or you were just making shirts or you just you know and something we always say something just told me i just felt this thing i just said let me try i one of the women i love a women i love so much uh, uh is tara you know when she talks about how she was just doing makeup it wasn't like you know and look at who she is today it's never a my daughter here you are here you are mariam i've been looking for you start light and curtains the name shall be called light and it shall be called curtains put light and curtains together and you shall have your business name, and then you will come again. He doesn't have to speak like that. He doesn't. Honestly, sometimes follow the pulsations of those impressions that God puts in your heart. And let me tell you something. I said it yesterday, and I'll say it again. I am not afraid to make a mistake as long as I am still with God. The idea that you will not make mistakes is also a, a, a is bondage. It's a form of bondage that I feel like, oh, God is leading me into something. God is leading me into something. And I'm following the beat. I'm following the beat that he's playing. I'm following that voice. I'm following that instruction. I'm asking those questions. And more is opening up. If for whatever reason, I make a mistake. I trust God. I trust my father. If I just maybe maybe had this air in judgment, I trust him to put me back in line. What are you saying? Who is your daddy? 
I trust him to put me. You can't be held back because of fear, because of anxiety. You can't be held back and say, eh, I'm not sure. Okay, God, let the moon turn to red. Let the sky turn to blue. Let I be turn, turn to yellow. Let the this turn to... Like, just trust the voice of the God that is your father. And trust that he can bring you out of foolishness if you mistakenly enter it. Mistakenly you. Not the one I say, roadblock, roadblock, roadblock. And you are like, ah, God, is that roadblock I really want to go? You know, we're not, we're not, we're not goats. We're not goats. We can hear, the, my sheep hear my voice. And they, they, they can hear me direct them. You are his sheep. The sheep of his pasture, you can hear him. Don't let anybody lie to you. You can hear your father. Have you seen how seamlessly she's telling you? And so it's someone just said, you can hear the voice of God through your colleague. You can hear the voice of God through your friend, through your PA, through your associate, through your pastor. You can hear the voice of your father. He can tell you this is the way walking is. And she said something so profound. She said, that yes, she didn't have that big bang and she started to take those steps. And she was like, I'm going to anything I would do, I'm going to do it well because that's who my daddy is. Do you see the order? She said, my father is not chaotic. There's no chaos in God. He's a God of order. Day one, day two, he made this. Day three, he did this. Day four, he did that. Day five, very systematic God. And so she's like, I want to put that same nature and character of God must be seen in what he has called me to do. So yes, God has called you. But are you willing to be diligent? Because as you were speaking to me, I was just saying, diligence. Wow. See, diligence. The grace of God. And this is why I don't want you guys to think that the grace of God is not something that you can capitalize on. You know when you say, oh, are you going to go to the gym tomorrow? By the grace of God. And that by the grace of God is, you know what? That grace may not be very strong that tomorrow. So let's just be saying if that grace can pull me out of bed and that grace can make me go to the gym. The grace of God empowers you to do what must be done. The grace of God looks like diligence, looks like excellence, looks like focus. It looks like hard work. It looks like it. Right? And so she spent time, yes, Stephanie here says, diligence is strategic thinking. She spent time and she was asking questions. She was like, okay, if I do it like this, what is going to happen? If I do it like this, this is what's going to happen. If I try this, this is what's going to happen. And so please, everything that you're going to do, it's not a waste of time if you are strategically thinking, when you're spending thinking time. Because a lot of us don't want to spend that time. No, spend time thinking. Spend time deliberating. But if you are strategically thinking, because sometimes people say we overthink and then we are paralyzed. No, it's not strategic thinking. Because strategic thinking produces a momentum for execution. If you are actually thinking the way you should be thinking and putting processes in place, you will actually execute. So you are only paralyzed because you are thinking defeating thoughts. Those are di that's different from strategic thinking. Strategic thinking will produce the result it ought to produce. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if we spend the time in thinking the way we ought to think, deliberating about the possibilities of this business, where it can go, what are the possibilities, all of those things, you will find that you can now take the next step and then the next step. You see, there was no money waiting for her somewhere, just locked up in one room. Right? It wasn't just locked up in one room. She was, as she was taking steps, resources, you know, the things that God has told us had to do before now started to make sense to her. And I honestly just believe that we, we have to come to that place where when God speaks to you, you know, sometimes we say, okay, when God speaks, maybe you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to really enter the business immediately, but you are supposed to still stay with him. Like she said, move with him. Keep following him. You say, okay, God, you've told me about this. Okay, what, what are we doing next? Sometimes it may just be like he's spending time working in you. And so you're like, God, you just give me this business idea and you're talking to me about my attitude. What does my attitude, attitude have to do with this business idea? Right? Because he's doing the work that is required to get you there. And the, the, I can't talk about everything she said, but the, the final thing I want to just point out was the sensitive. 
Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. When God is speaking, when God is speaking, be sensitive. Be sensitive. Know when he wants you to move. Know when God wants you to take a step. There are some people, God has told you, call that person, and you have thought of 10 reasons why you cannot call. 10 reasons why you cannot do what he has called you to do. That is not the way to get the result that God wants to see in our lives. Right? God bless you, Timmy. God bless you. And I just want, on a, on a lighter but not so lighter note, I want us to talk about your sense of style. And the reason I want to talk about this is because you kind of defy this conventional norm and you, you uphold and live in your authentic style. And we are in an influencer ge generation, social media and everything. And they dictate what should be what should be common. You know, they dictate this is how you should dress. If you are an influencer, these are the things you must have. This sandal, these slippers, you know, these are the MOs. But here you are, and you're like, I'm rocking my teeth. I'm my I'm a blazer girl. On your wedding, I saw I saw your outfit and I was like, okay, right? What gives you the confidence to just show up as Timmy, the Timmy with this unique style? And I and I don't want to be confirmed because a lot of times when we start out on this journey, people are suppressed or they feel like they have to suppress their own unique style or their and beyond clothing, beyond just clothing, whether it is hair, whether it's the way you speak, whether whatever it is that represents your own authentic design right what is that thing that what what makes you confident to show up you know that way confident to show up that way i think i i, I kind of stumbled on my style um mm. so, but i knew that at the core of everything was very important modesty and you know i also have the way i also think about the way you dress is that you send a lot of information without you knowing it. Um, okay. so on this meeting, I actually wanted to wear a blazer because that's that's the way I am. Even if it's 1 a.m. you invite me for a meeting and it's virtual, I'll wear a blazer. Because <laughs> I could not grab the blazer I put out before and I didn't want to come. <laughs> right. So for me, is who is Timmy? Like, this is who Timmy is. And she can decide to, like, evolve and not follow what other people think she should be doing so let me break this down so currently there are some there there are a lot of things that i wear and even for events i don't want to sound cliche but sometimes god instructs me what to wear and i'll tell you why that's not cliche when my girl when I the meeting, there was a day i wanted to i wanted to wear an outfit it was actually a suit but I just had this nudging that it's not like God will come and call you that. Oh, yeah, tell me where this goes. I just had this nudging that, okay, let me just change to this dress, a particular dress. And I'll tell you that that dress started a conversation that got me an opportunity. And the person might have probably never approached me to say, oh my goodness, you look so good. Like, yeah, I look good every day. But what was special about that dress on that particular day? So for me, first of all, there's a way I want people to see me. But at the core of it is knowing that it is not the clothes that make me, right? So let me establish that. It's not the clothes that makes me. If you see me in jeans and top when I'm doing my business run around, you might decide not to greet me. It's absolutely fine. But Timmy is still Timmy, right? But knowing now. that, first of all, there is a way to represent the Jesus that you carry. There is a way to represent who you say you are. So when I go for event or I even dress to work, like even lights and curtains, I wear jacket. Ask the people that work with me. I wear my suits to lights and curtains, and it's my wow. business. You can't hold me if I wear Crocs, you know. But there's a way I want to be perceived, right? There's a way I want people to see me, and you, you either you like it or not. People address you the way you dress. Yes, right? yes, right. People address you the way you dress. And even before what you carry, what you are probably wearing, you know, in the logical world, is what even, you know, invite people to you. And I'm not saying wear flashy clothes like me, but at the basic, please look good. Yes. I don't know how those looks like. 
but I don't think people would be coming around him. <laughs> he wasn't looking nice, you know. So look good, represent who you say you carry, right? So for me, it was sticking to my style, knowing that this is what is comfortable for me. Oh, if I'm coming, if somebody's wearing colorful, you can tell if there's an event and there's somebody wearing color in that event, not me. Right, so it's nothing really too deep for me, but it's also knowing that I represent something and I will not go below the standard for the person that I represent. Wow. Right, most of us we wear outfits to places to different places that I know people that buy expensive outfits to go to clubs to go to. So, if I'm going out to represent my Jesus, I better be looking good. And I'm not mm. saying go and buy clothes from Zara. There, when I didn't have money for Zara and all those ones, there are places that I buy clothes from. A lot of Nigerian brands. I buy in my Naira and I wear my clothes. I look good. I present myself in a way that, you know, when I approach to people to even say, I want to talk to you about Jesus, they will answer me. Because I, I don't get it. Yeah, you answer me now. <laughs> and then you meet me. You now realize that, ah, no, this one, she used style and enter me to talk to you about Jesus. You know. Yes, for the sake of, of yourself, safe, eh? dress nice. Let me tell you, there's a way you dress that you feel confident. That's an outfit that I wear that, ah, if I wear it, eh? There's nothing that tells me I'm on top of my game. So, right, so dress good. Don't keep yeah. your best clothes for best events. Wear what you have now, eh? The God that provided that black blazer, eh? He will provide another one. So, wear I what you me. have. Wear it with pride. And look good for Jesus, right? So wow. it's super, super important. And I also like to say that my life is a colorful life. And I think it reflects in every single thing that I do. So I try to, everything around me, I'm not this person that has a house, that has minimalist inside. That's not who I am. I'm very true to myself. <laughs> I like colors, like the gold in the deco, wow. shining. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, it's super, super important that we are who we are. And one thing I will say, God will not, if you are a funny person, God will not try to not make you funny to get the things that you need to get. You know, my, I will use this example. My pastor is, I used to say that if my pastor wasn't preach, like my pastor is a very, I love, you know, having conversations with him. He's very jovial. He's very lively and everything. And I'm like, okay, he's preaching. He's powerful. But it didn't have to change who he is you know, yeah. be able to, you know, be who God has called him to be. So if you're yeah. a colorful person, there's no need to be doing clean girl aesthetics. Hmm? <laughs> if you are not, <laughs> you know, because let me say this, there was, a, there was a YouTube video that I saw and the, the person sat down for two hours. Okay, not two hours, like I think one hour, teaching people how to be a clean, a clean girl aesthetic something. And I'm like, this is this is not it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pressure that makes you feel like you have to be wearing white and brown to look a certain way. People will make you you wear wear what you wear. If sneakers mm -hmm. and jeans is what you like to wear, wear it. People will people will catch up on you. That's what I always say. People will always catch up. Just consistently, mm -hmm. just good and be modest because you represent someone. So yeah, that's that's. Oh my God. <laughs> again let the offering basket go round secondly she just gave us deliverance on a platter of gold <laughs> and this thing she just said at the end let me tell you the truth you know the bible says some of us we go to deliverance house i'm not against them i'm just saying <laughs> that the bible says that you shall know the truth and the truth will what? make you free you see, the bondage is not anybody in the village. It's just truth. It's just truth. Look at the truth that she just dispensed. Are you not free to be your authentic design, your authentic self? And it is something I preach. She said that she has a colorful life. And it is an expression. All the things we see is an expression of the colors. If you go to a house, say you will not see white and brown, you know, neutral colors, aesthetic. She, it's a color something. She wants it, let it shine. Let there be gold. You cannot, don't put yourself under pressure. I see people that I know that God has called them to share the gospel, share their faith, but they want to keep a certain post. Their posts, they are, they, there's a way their feet must look. 
They say there's a way the feed has to look in order to do this Jesus work. Are you joking? You want to confine God to algorithms and the trends of a generation that is flaky? When God has sent you, here, Temila Day is telling us, so everybody open your ears and hear very clearly. She said she's not confined. She's not confined to the trends. This is who she is. And she's not defined by what she wears. But out of the abundance of the life of Christ that she carries, there is an expression of same in what she's wearing. Let's not make a mistake. My mentor would say, she said, at a greater level, at some level, and I want to mute my mic as I'm saying it, perception is greater than reality. The way you would go, you see this water now, if I buy it from a supermarket, maybe 200 naira. If I go to Hilton, I will buy the same water for 2K25. Why? And if I like, let me convulse, let my blood be boiling. Now here, two five, it's not 200 outside. It is the perceived value of the Hilton that has made that water cost that amount. And so, whether we like it or not, there is a way that even what we carry is perceived because of the container that is carrying it. Because of the pressing, the vessel that is carrying it. And so it is so important that that vessel, that is why our, our exercise matters, our diet matters in all of this spirituality that we are, we are saying, you know, why? I mean, there's, there's, it, it matters. So the, the way we dress matters. It matters. But she's now saying that even though it matters, you can represent yourself at the level that is true. Because it's so important. This thing you said, I know that this thing has set people free. Clean girl aesthetics, white and all of this, you know, crystal colors, everything looking. If that's not you, if you're an orange girl, be an orange girl. If you are all colors, be an orange And if white aesthetic is your thing, okay, do your thing. If you know that wearing boo-boo is not your vibe, it's okay. It's fine. If you know that uh, uh, T-shirt and jeans is not your thing, that's also fine, right? It is so important for us to be able to see how much we can represent Christ, even in things like this. Because some of us, as you continue to journey in your purpose, you may find yourself where God gives you platforms and, and you have opportunities, right? You want to be able to still represent Christ, even in that. Knowing that, yes, these clothes don't make you, the phone doesn't make you, the, you know, whatever, it's not what defines you. But if God has put you in a position and he's saying, I want my life, see what she said about that dress. If she had not just followed that nudging and worn that dress, the opportunity would have been there. She wouldn't even know she lost it. And let me just use this opportunity to cheat this in. A lot of the times we are aware of the opportunities we lose. Do you know the greatest one is not even knowing that there was a lost opportunity? That is the one that is painful because she may not have even known that there was something for her. That is why it pays to obey God and to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. That is why. That is why. And tell me finally, yeah, let me just, this, you know, final question. You've spoken about your pastor, spoken about Christ. And I have noticed it. I even saw your Bible. I saw it there, your church. I saw you are on apologetic. You, po you post your pastor's books. <laughs> you don't play. That's just the truth. And I want to know why you, in all the things you do, I see how much you serve in, well, from the online, like I said, how much you serve and how much you don't allow that part of you, you yeah. know, die in the process of all of this globalness, right? Talk to right. us about that. I think, um, okay, two things. First of all, I, I know that my major purpose on this earth for everybody, everybody on this call, eh, is to know Jesus and then make him known, right? So everything we're doing, followers, oh, global moves, oh, on that day when you come, how many souls for you are rich heaven? That's the first question. No. 
Right. And I'm just saying, like, of course, like, it's not like you come and ask. But, like, mm-hmm. this is the sole reason why we're here, right? So when your work takes over your time with God and service, then you need to check it. You need to mm-hmm. make sure that there is no point at your life where you prioritize what you are doing than the person who sent you. So what a lot of us have done is God has given us gifts and then we've left the giver and then held on to the gifts. And then, you know, the, the funnest part is you still be doing well. Uh-uh. It's like when you put off the fan, it will still be rolling. You'll be shining. In face of everything. But inside, deep down, you know that uh-uh, you are not rooted. So yeah. because of how I um of because of the fragility of like where I work, when I say where I work, I don't mean my workplace, like the kind of space that I'm in. I know that if you know get Jesus, <laughs> you will you will move astray. <laughs> you know that right. because we are, we are in Nigeria, some things are contained and a lot of that. Mm-hmm. But the moment so many things are shouting at you, so many things that drawn your attention and if you were not rooted before that announcement they will just use hand to approach you like this and that will be it and i also like to say that god has first called us to his house like to serve him and everything so our work you know must always take reference from the work that we do in his house and for me i take a big pride in talking about where i'm coming from because i know that I don't have any man. Nobody can say I made Temi. Nobody can say I gave Temi the life she's living. Only God. So why not? Why shouldn't I just stick to what I know that is working for me? <laughs> you know, and will continually work for me. And you know, talking about my church and my pastor, you know, I will say that it's been. I feel I, I know that when God wants to make you great, He gives some people authority over you, right? And. Wow. You can make sure that you stay under that authority and you yeah. serve that because your just one word from the person leading you can make can compress 10 years of your life into one year just because you are serving under that person. So God gives us fathers and spiritual leaders to because to you know make us stay in the will of God to prepare us for the places that we are going. To make sure that we are not cheap, that have <laughs> that that has gotten lost, you know, yeah. in the woes, right? So for me, is is knowing that oh, I know there was a significant change in my life when I joined my church, when mm-hmm. I met my pastor, and I will never mm-hmm. let that fire go down because I know how much wow. changed in my life. So God puts us in. Churches, whatever church you're attending, you know, even if it's not my church, anywhere that God is, I know that this is where we need to be. God puts us there so that we can have covering, right? And we can also move with speed in our lives. Things that to, you will toil and do like this. Just one thing from the person who is a cover upon your life. One word. It will do as if you are doing, you know, this thing that they say you are doing charm. How are you doing it? That yeah. yourself, you yourself even explain. So, I, I would just say this lastly, please. There's no point hiding Jesus. I don't even know how we became so comfortable with it. We've been to spaces, corporate spaces, and I will see you will see people doing incantation on plane while they are traveling. People wow. stopping. I go to buy food from a bookies. Once it's two and four p.m., if you like, they bring you one million dollars. Please spread their mats and pray to their God. So what makes us think that we as believers, it's okay to be doing cool Christianity. We don't, want the, we don't want the cross. We don't want to also carry the cross and everything. But we want the all, you know, gift and, you know, aftermath and um, results that comes with knowing Jesus. Jesus is not emblem that you want to just wear as necklace. It's our life. Hey. We make sure that we're not using him for aesthetics. Aesthetics. And let me tell wow. you so many other things I'm doing, and I could have tagged, tagged all those pages, of course. But the first thing you will see is that this is the church I attend, and I'll tell you yeah. for free. I say this with all humility I can't count how many people have come to the knowledge of Christ just because I put that on my bio that this is where I go to. And the thing is, when you have results, people will follow you. 
Anyway, if you yeah. like, you don't even go to good church. They will follow you. So yeah. it's because you have that result. And I know that, okay, now I have this influence. I better use the influence for Jesus because waiting in the end, what is the point? You run, you do career. In that day, God will not ask you how many check you sign. If you look back, how many people came to Jesus because you existed in your life, right? So please, it's our life. Carry it. Eh? The way you will, you will carry yourself. Carry Jesus. There's no shame. I'll tell you, this is where I belong. And I feel like what? Some people don't come to me because they already see that thing in my bio. You can't, there are some things you can't bring to me that I should come and do. There are some influencer mm. jobs you won't come and meet me to do because... As you did my page, you they see all the things people are falling under the spirit. You can't come and tell me come and influence for club. It's not possible. <laughs> so life. good. Send away some things automatically from you. So you are doing yourself. Wow. You don't preach Jesus. Other people will preach Jesus. So, so let it not be that it is you that you are missing out eh, on this whole thing. So yeah, thank you so much. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the energy. Timmy, it is not just the things you said. It is who you are for me. Because it is the things you are saying are a reflection of the bounty that is on the inside of you. And honestly, I, I am flawed. I am flawed because you have your head screwed on by the grace of God, by the empowerment of the spirit. Your head, you know, it says someone's head is correct. Your head is there. Your head is there. And I am so happy that I, I know someone earlier said she's here for us, the Gen Z's. <laughs> you know, I'm so happy that you represent this for a generation that you can be doing great things for God, but my primary place is to be with Him. I don't want to do great things for God and I and I'm not with God because God already has people doing that. The Elon Musk of this world and the Mark Zuckerberg, I know you don't think they are Christians, but they are doing things for God. They are just not particularly submitted to him as his sons. And so we don't want to fall under that category of being tools in the hands of God. We want to be vessels, his sons, his children that are in partnership with him. And I am so grateful that you've been able to share your life. You were not just giving us all tips and tricks. This is your life. This is what you are living out. It is clear that Jesus is, is at the center of all the things that you do. And for everyone that wants to come into that place of being fiercely confident as it were, there's no confidence outside of him. There's no confidence outside of him. Said, this is my life. At the end of the day, God is God does all the assignments. All the all my purpose, my purpose is for souls. My assignments, my assignments is for souls. This instruction, that instruction is for souls. And she's found, and this is the power, the importance of community. She's found a community with leadership, right, and a covering. She said, this, this. If God is going to make you great, you're going to have to come under the leadership and authority of great men that he has sent to cover you. It doesn't mean they can, they now control you or they are now, you know, but they are there. She said they shrink time. Some people, if you want to experience things, they say one word, she said one word from them can shrink 10 years into 10 minutes because of proper alignment. That is the nature and the order of God. He's not chaotic. And so I want to encourage you that it is important to, to, to ask the Lord to lead you to the right leadership. And some of you may already be in, with, in that. Honor oh, it. Honor oh, that leadership. And say, God, how can I continue to serve in your house? Yes, God doesn't have a problem because we know we, we people say, yes, the church is not the kingdom. It's a subset of the kingdom. But you see that church that is a subset of the kingdom is still part of the kingdom that he still wants us to serve in. And so, yes, there may be seasons where you are not even physically present, but your heart does not have to be detached, right? And so it's so important to put the weighty matters where they, where they are, where they should be, right? I'm so blessed tonight, and I am glad, right, that you have been able to share so much light, so much light to us. And for everybody that is still going to watch this, it has been an incredible time of deliverance. And 
as is custom before you leave, I just want us to pray for Tini. You see, it is the hand of God that is upon her. And it is clear that his anointing is at work in her life. And so let's just pray that God himself will, will finish what he has started with her. The journey is still long. He's still, it's still far. But she, God is the God of her journey. And at every point in time, at every road, she will see God. She will see God. She will see her father. He will amplify that which he has called her to do. Her voice is amplified in the nations because of the burden of the Lord that he has placed on her inside. Your voice is amplified, not because of any other thing, but because of the seed of God that you carry. Your voice is amplified in the nations because of the souls that the Lord will use your voice to deliver. In the name of Jesus, you are no small woman. From this moment, you consistently and continually walk in the greatness that has been assigned to you because there's a greatness that has been assigned to you. And from this moment, we join our faith together to declare over you that you walk in the reality of that greatness without fear, without favor in the name of Jesus. You walk in strength. Your strength is renewed daily. Your strength is renewed daily. And nothing suffers. Nothing suffers. Your strength is renewed daily. You receive wisdom. Wisdom to carry the next generation on your shoulders. As God carries you, you will carry men. Because he has found in you a trustworthy vessel. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. The rest will be in your DMs. I don't want to, I'm, I'm, I said, let me control myself. So I will just send the rest, you know, to you, uh, Timmy, in your DMs. So, but thank you so much for being a blessing. Please, can we just share how much we love her, how much she has been a blessing? You know, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you so God. much, everyone. Thank you <laughs> for coming. And yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take care. Have a good, good night. Thank you. I so love much. your husband. <laughs> oh, yeah, I will send it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Whew, guys. Honestly, my heart is just pumped. My heart is so pumped. I'm so excited. And I'm seeing your comments. It's just been mind-blowing. And this is just the two. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I honestly am so grateful for how God has carried us on this journey. I'm grateful for how he's carrying us on this journey. And my prayer for you, and I don't want you to take it lightly, is that you would be a vessel that can carry the precious promises and the precious dealings of God in your life. You will be a worthy vessel that can carry by his mercy and his grace the precious promises and the precious dealings of God in your life. I pray from today that the capacity to respond to the nudgings of God is released to you. You are awakened to a reality that is beyond your current circumstance in the name of Jesus. You are awakened to a reality that is beyond your current limitation in the name of Jesus. Your eyes, your inner eyes, they see. Your inner ears they hear in the name of Jesus and your heart can conceive. I pray for a heart that con can conceive divine ideas. I pray for a heart that can conceive divine ideas and solutions. You will not just conceive them. You will have capacity to carry, capacity to nurture, capacity to birth, capacity to sustain every divine insight. And every divine resource that the Lord will begin to release to you. For some of you, your nights will no longer be ordinary. Some of you, your lunch breaks will no longer be ordinary. Because you will experience visitations 
from God, visitations from God that look like just regular days, regular moments, but he's now intercepting and interjecting your, your waking moments, your sleeping moments, your talking moments. He's interjecting because of the, of the plan and the purpose that he has for you to fulfill in the earth. Receive grace for every area that grace is needed. Receive power for everywhere that power and might is needed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys. It has been such a tremendous time. And I want you to do something for me. I want you to deliberately, once the link for the session tomorrow is released, I want you to share it. You see, when we talk about the guy with the one talent that God called wicked, a lot of us sometimes can read that story and feel detached from that story. But here's the deal. God said, it would have been better if you just put it in a bank. It would have been better if you put it in a, in a, hmm, in a, in a, in an interest generating system. You didn't have to cook it up yourself. Now, for some of you, you didn't have to carry out this assignment yourself, this fiercely confident assignment. But it will be wickedness that God had given someone the idea and all you had to do was share it. And whatever reward in quote there would be for the sharing is accrued to you because you did. And so don't go and hide. Don't go and hide it. And let me just listen to it. It's only me. Let me just. No. That was the same thing the guy with the one talent did. And what happened? It was taken from him and given to the person that produced more with their five talents. If you don't want what you are receiving to be taken away from you, share it. It is only a septic tank that retains. You are designed to be a conduit, a pipe. So share it. Tell people about the sessions. Share the link. I think the link has been sent. If you're not on the WhatsApp group, you can join it. The link has also been sent. Share it with people and let them know that such a thing is happening. And let them know that their lives will be transformed as a result. Don't keep your status. Some of you, I don't lie. Don't post on my WhatsApp status. God will ask you. <laughs> God is going to ask you why you don't post on WhatsApp status and you have WhatsApp. Post. It will not affect your aesthetic. Post on your on your Instagram story. Post it. Let people know that you have been a part of something and you want to bless them with it. You don't have to be the originator of it to be a blessing to souls, to be a blessing, blessing to many. So make sure you're doing that. And then secondly, I have something incredible coming up that I'm going to be sharing with us tomorrow because someone said, Lady Kems, we have to unpack this. I said, yes, we do. And I said at the beginning of this session that you don't assume that you've heard and you know and you're going to walk in this transformation just because of this one time that you heard it. Actually, no, because your brain is designed to move according to what is preset. So if there is already a preset, if there's that which has already been set, it is going to take work for that brain to be undone, for it to be changed, that pattern of behavior that you actually want to interject. What would do the work is when there's diligent process involved. And I'm going to be introducing us to, okay, am I, am I going ahead of myself? But tomorrow, I'm going to be introducing us to a, a process that will help us unpack this. Now, this is not going to be for everybody. This is for people who the thing is really doing. And you know that there's going to be a need to be in a community of people where we are drilling in into why this matters for you now and how you can begin to deploy it and take the next steps that you must take. And so I want you to look out for it tomorrow. We're going to be sharing it and it's going to be amazing. I'm looking forward to it. My heart is pumping. The things God has been speaking to me about on this confidence issue and how to unpack it is, is I, I don't even have the word. So I want you to look forward to it. And, and you know, it, this is just a, it's just a taste out of what is possible, right? So look forward to that. And then we're having Olori tomorrow, <laughs> her royal highness herself. And let me just use this opportunity to tell you guys. Having the Olori on here is a fiercely confident move. 
and I have not gathered this meeting because oh, I have it all down pat, right? There are things that God is still working with me, you know, on me on. But the truth of the matter is that there came a point that I unlocked and I said, you know what? If the father needs it, then we can place a demand on it. Whatever the father needs, we can we can trust him to help us to, to, to get to that place. And that was what happened. And so I want to encourage you, right? I want to encourage you. Be here on time, eight o'clock. Well, just and be waiting. Don't be waiting. Don't be waiting. Because we want to hear about the queen. We want to know what it is that has. Let me not go ahead of myself. I'll just wait. I'll just wait. I'll wait until tomorrow. All right, guys. It's been amazing having you all on here. See you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.